Hello everyone, my name is Ken Small and I'm the Development Director at BronxWorks. Thank you for taking some time to join us at our annual celebration. It is my distinct honor and privilege to introduce you to our host and special ambassador, CBS News national correspondent, Vladimir Dutier. Good evening, everyone. Every year, BronxWorks comes together as an organization to celebrate their work and the neighbors they serve. After an unprecedented time in our city's history, we come together now to celebrate the resilience of the Bronx. I'm your host, CBS News national correspondent, Vladimir Dutier, and I am so very happy to join you as we support the great work that Bronx Works has accomplished. Join me and listen to incredible stories of resilience and triumph in the face of an unprecedented pandemic. We will also honor strong women leaders in the community and recognize their contributions to the Bronx. You can provide much needed funding to support Bronx Works as they continue to live their mission to feed, to shelter, and to teach all while supporting the Bronx community. Visit BronxWorks event, givesmart.com or text BronxWorks event to 76278. We've got a great program for you to enjoy, so let us get right to it. Please welcome BronxWorks Executive Director, Eileen Torres. Thank you, Vlad, and thank you to everyone for supporting the 2022 BronxWorks Evening Reception. What does it mean to have resilience and what are the circumstances that create it within a community? Resilience is typically not a quality that you see until it is required, but having worked in the Bronx for nearly 30 years, I can say that it is a quality that I have seen the most in the folks building their lives and their communities in this borough. This 2022 evening reception celebrates that resilience. It is the dedication that has brought out the best in our staff who have worked throughout these years and recommitted themselves before every challenge to the betterment of the Bronx. This 2022 evening reception celebrates that resilience. It is the dedication that has brought out the best in our staff who have worked throughout these years and recommitted themselves before every challenge to the betterment of the Bronx. It is the determination which has inspired supporters from all over to give generously to our food pantries, allowing families and households access to nutritious foods or to our work helping families recover from catastrophic fires. It is the perseverance that has led our partners to envision and build a brighter future in the Bronx despite enormous setbacks. We are all inspired by the resilience that is displayed here every single day by tens of thousands of participants and families that have chosen to pursue more for themselves and their communities. By our nearly 1,000 strong workforce representing not only the needs of our communities but also every human service employee in the fight for fair wages by hundreds of households working with BronxWorks to rebuild after tragic fires, by thousands of youth participants seeking work experience in our summer youth employment program, by thousands more adults bettering their futures through our workforce trainings and certifications and finding full-time employment in sustainable sectors like maintenance, security, construction, and human services by our students who have endured unprecedented school years and who continue to dream and strive in our after-school and summer programs and in our STEM and literacy enrichment programs, by those who are completing high school or high school equivalency and are exploring future options like college, trade school, or employment. When you support BronxWorks, you are supporting each and every one of the individuals and families over 60,000 a year in all of the innumerable ways that our work is reshaping the Bronx. On behalf of BronxWorks, I want to thank our host, Vladimir Dutier, for taking time out of his busy schedule to be with us. I also want to congratulate our honorees, Teresa Gonzalez from Dolly Gonzalez and Bolton St. John's, Annie Churchwell and Jill Crawford from Type A Projects, and Dr. Lydia Virgil from Somos Community Care. Also, thank you to our partners at BronxNet for welcoming us into their brand new studios at Lehman College. Lastly, my deepest thanks to all of our sponsors, donors, and guests of the 2022 Evening Reception. Thank you for all of your contributions to our mission. Now I'd like to share with you a video of our work and the stories of a few of our most resilient Bronx neighbors. Hello, my name 
my name is Destiny. I have two children. They're my world. My children is my world. I found out about Bronx Works. Hey, Destiny, how are you? Hello. I started coming during the pandemic. My mindset was, how are we going to survive? The pantry is pretty important because as everybody know, the world that we live in right now, everything is going sky high. Food, beverages, just for them to even have the food pantry on site in front of our building or and even in our environment, it, it helps out a lot. Onions, lettuce. My son actually goes to the cooking classes here and he enjoys it. I like doing anything that they want to do and anything that's going to put a smile on their face. Bronx Works, I, I really love the fact that they're doing the amount of things that they're doing, especially with this community. She expressed an interest in construction. So we were able to train Destiny um, and through the training, she was able to earn her OSHA 30. She gave everybody the opportunities, whether it's through the food pantry or through getting a job and just opening it up to the environment. And immediately upon completion of all of those trainings, we were able to set up an interview with her which Destiny was hired for. I had to do something. Kids are very beyond expensive. And so I had to get up. I had to do the footwork. Destiny has definitely overcame a lot of barriers. She definitely didn't let those barriers stop her from thriving. Bronx work actually helped me along the way. My name is Balima, and I'm a student in Bronx work, trying to get my GED. I came in the U.S. in 2005. It's very important for me to get the GED because I'm trying to get in the nursing um, program. Back in my country, I was going to school to be a doctor. Things got in the way and I have to come over here. For the longest, I was trying to get to the GED program, but I didn't know where to go and how to do it. When I started the program, I was really, I don't know what I'm doing but the program helped me a lot. The importance of having the prep classes for students is to prepare them in you know, math, reading, science, and social studies, and to get them familiar with the uh, material that's going to be covered on the uh, GED exam. Particularly the uh, essay portion of the exam can be challenging. The writing section was really hard for me because English is not my first language. I need a lot of training so I can get better in my writing. She recently tested that she passed everything except for one subject. I'm confident that she will, she will to her diploma. She works really hard. She comes to tutoring. It's a really important journey and it's, it instills such a, a, a such a confidence in them. I'm not young no more, but I still want to fight for my dream. <laughs> my name is Frederick. At the height of COVID, I was in the hospital. I had an accident. I got hit by a bus, which put me in the hospital for four months where I had broken ribs, my leg broken in two places. I had to learn how to walk again. I got out at the end of March, and by the grace of God, I ended up in the pyramid, which was the best thing that ever happened to me in my life. I met Frederick when he first came into the pyramid safe haven. He was not in very, um, very good shape. He was struggling with all the medical conditions, um, including diabetes. We were able to provide a bed for Frederick. I got my strength back and everything through Bronx Works. And then I just focused on getting my foundation. My biggest thing when I was living on the streets was I would walk by and see people with their lights on and I would say, wow, they're in their houses. I wish that was me. It's nothing like your own. This means the world to me. I'm 61. This is the first time that I could say I have something that's mine. And over here is my closet where I have my hats. My name is on the lease. My name, this is mine. Yeah, that's why I, yeah. I go to Miss Liz Benny for everything. And she's always available. Do you need assistance actually making those appointments? He is more engaged with medical providers. It was an amazing um, transition to see him at the shelter and then here at Park Haven in supportive housing. It improved a lot of their lifestyle, their health. Yeah, I was caught up in a a rut, you could say, like, 
nobody cares, don't nobody care. I'm not gonna never get nothing. But when I got with Bronx Works and I seen how they were helping people, I was like, this works. Stories like these abound in the Bronx. We find them at Bronx Works at each of our programs and every one of our participants every single day. For 50 years, we have watched stories like Destinies of perseverance and hope for her family. Stories like Valima's of aspiration and hard work for her dreams. Stories like Frederick's of personal tenacity and grit. Every year we witness tens of thousands of stories that demonstrate the resilience of our communities and this borough. We draw our own strength from those stories and as long as the Bronx doesn't quit, Bronx Works will never quit. What keeps a smile on my face is knowing that things are getting better, knowing that if we continue to stand together and we could continue to stand strong, things are definitely getting better. Bronx work is happen not only they happen the young people, they also happen people like me that are trying to to move on to something bigger. It made me feel good to have that type of respect from people higher up than me because I came from nowhere. I didn't have nothing and they helped me out. You're always there. Always. Welcome back. I hope you all are as inspired as I am by the stories of Destiny, Belima, and Frederick and the resilience they've shown as they've overcome challenges in their lives. Throughout the pandemic, Bronx Works adapted our programs to keep our impact relevant and true to the needs of the community. Our program's abilities to keep up with constantly changing circumstances would be impossible without our willing participants, our incredible staff, and especially stakeholders like you. My colleagues will now highlight our honorees, three important partners in our work. These honorees are a chosen group of strong women leaders who are making unique contributions to the Bronx. To introduce our first honoree, please welcome Julie Spitzer, Bronx Works Department Director of Homelessness Prevention and Access to Benefits. Thank you, Ken. Hello, everyone. I'm Julie Spitzer. I have been with Bronx Works for 29 years. Those of us who are long-term employees have had the benefit of growing alongside Bronx Works and seeing the impact that we've had on the borough. It is the reason we have stayed and the reason we come to work day after day. One of the most important aspects of our work is advocating for what our communities need to advance and prosper. Along the way, we have been fortunate to partner with some incredible colleagues who share in our passion for uplifting communities. Teresa Gonzalez has championed community and cultural institutions throughout her career and has been integral in connecting Bronx Works with important partnerships and resources. She is a co-founder of Daily Gonzalez and a partner at Bolton St. John's, helping public and private institutions build capacity, establish partnerships, and navigate complex and government community issues. Teresa has been recognized for her work by New York City Hispanic Chamber of Commerce and has made city and states above and beyond lists of accomplished women leaders. I'm thrilled to present this award to our first honoree, Teresa Gonzalez. Thank you so much for that lovely introduction, Julie. And thank you to Bronx Works for the distinction of being one of the 2022 Evening Reception honorees alongside this amazing group of strong women leaders. It is such a privilege to accept this honor from an organization that represents such a powerful commitment to community and to uplifting, marginalized, and often ignored voices, all values that we have in common. The fact that Bronx Works is headed by Eileen Torres, a Latina powerhouse in her own right, makes this all the more meaningful to me. Bronx Works delivers for its communities every day, and this is so important, especially in the face of the challenges of the pandemic and the past several years. Not only does Bronx Works provide key services for its neighbors, but more importantly, it is a champion for the needs, goals, and vision of its communities at both the city and state levels. I had the distinct pleasure of connecting with Bronx Works a few years ago through my community engagement work on behalf of Lyft, City Bike, and DoorDash, and they have been thoughtful partners and good friends ever since. 
It is a triumph when the like-minded come together to propel a common cause, when we can work together to uplift society, to break the cycle of poverty, to build a better future for all of our communities. The challenges of the past several years have only galvanized Bronx Works and its partners in this mission. It has been a personal accomplishment to be a part of this work and to accept this award. So again, thank you so much for this honor and congrats to tonight's honorees. I'm so humbled to be in all of your company. Hello everyone. I'm Erica Coleman, General Counsel for Bronx Works. Throughout the years, Bronx Works has grown in a way that has reflected the evolution of the Bronx. We have guided our expansion on the principle of filling the needs of the communities we serve staying true to the pulse of the borough and keeping an open forum to our neighbors, friends, partners, and stakeholders. We have been fortunate to be involved in several projects that have and will reshape the landscape of the Bronx. Developments like Bronx Point will transform longtime vacant sites into dynamic residential and community space, with the first phase set to bring over 500 units of affordable apartments, revitalized open public spaces, commerce, and cultural institutions to the Bronx. The project is being developed by Type A Projects and l and Development Partners. And our partnership with Type A Projects will allow Bronx Works a foothold in developments like Bronx Point and more to provide educational and social services to the surrounding communities. Led by Jill Crawford and Annie Tershwell, Type A Projects has shown a commitment to building a better future for the Bronx and I am so happy to present them with this award. Hello, and thank you, Erica. I am Annie Tershwell. And I'm Jill Crawford. We're thrilled to be here in support of the Bronx Works 2022 Evening Reception. It is such an honor to be recognized alongside this inspirational group of women, and it means so much to know that the common thread among us is how our work and our partnership with Bronx Works has contributed to the resilience of the Bronx. Our company, Type A Projects, is guided by the principle that every project is an opportunity to open doors and impact lives in lasting and transformative ways. We believe that equitable access to high quality housing is one of the most important ways to help strengthen and uplift communities. And that's why we've dedicated ourselves to building inspiring, vibrant, and affordable places where our residents can live, work, learn, and thrive. Taipei's work with Bronx Works began at Bronx Point, the future home of 542 units of permanent affordable housing, the exciting Universal Hip Hop Museum, and Bronx Works' own pre-K facility and supportive service offices for the formerly homeless residents of the project. Bronx Works was a true partner during Bronx Point's two-year community engagement process to design almost three acres of open space being purpose-built at the foot of the project. Over 25 meetings later, their deep connection and respect within the community helped to create a design supported by all community stakeholders. But our work together did not stop there. Together, Type A, Bronx Works, and l and Development Partners have just won a highly competitive HPD RFP. Located behind Health and Hospitals Morrisonia Clinic, our joint venture will bring the borough over 250 units of permanently affordable housing, a Bronx Works Empowerment Center embedded within the project, providing their hallmark best-in-class social services to residents and the broader community. With this project, we are proving just how powerful a WBE and not-for-profit alliance can be. We could not be more proud of our continued partnership with Bronx Works and the approximately 900 units of new housing, community and social services, and dynamic commercial space we are jointly bringing to the borough. We are incredibly proud to be accepting an award from such a critically important driving force of the city. Thank you so much. Hi everyone, I'm Maria Rivera, Department Director of Services for Older Adults. There's so much to be proud of when it comes to the work that we do at Bronx Works. But what I'm most proud of is how we have supported our seniors and the most vulnerable members of our communities with every resource available to us. It is an issue that is dear to my heart, ensuring that our seniors remain heard, seen, and valued. At the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, when we were forced to shut down our in-person activities at our older adult centers, our staff did everything we could to maintain contact with every one of our clients. 
We conducted health checks nearly daily via telephone and set up virtual activities. We provided food pantry services at our centers to ensure that our clients had access to healthy foods. And perhaps most importantly, as soon as we were able, we helped our seniors get vaccinated, embarked on a campaign to educate our communities on the safety and the importance of COVID-19 vaccine. We are thrilled to now provide in-person services at our centers. Somos Community Care has been an invaluable partner in the mission to protect our communities from COVID-19. And as soon as the vaccines were available, they set up clinics at our sites and continue to vaccinate, vaccinate the community. They have been a force in distributing resources and protection against COVID, especially for the underserved Bronx communities. It is my pleasure to present this award to Dr. Lydia Virgil, Chief Operations Officer at Somos Community Care. Good evening, and thank you so much. Thank you, for Maria, for that great introduction. Thank you, Bronx Works, for this great honor of being able to be here tonight and being able to share with you and with this lovely community all the hard work that has been done through this great organization of Bronx Works. We at Somos are a community-driven organization. We strive to get to those hard places, those places where others don't want to go. And it has been a blessing to find an organization like Bronx Works to go in there with us and to fight the fight. In 2020, when we were so hard hit through this COVID-19 pandemic, many people were in hiding, many people stood still, many people were indoors. It was Somos that was out there. It was Somos that was in the trenches. And through these trenches, we found Bronx Works. And what a great partner to have on our side, one who shares our vision of reaching out to those that are underserved, that are hard hit, that are not noticed sometimes by the society, but that need care. And it has been our honor and continues, continues to be our honor to be fighting alongside Bronx Works to bring to the Bronx the care, not only that they need, not that they want, but the care that they deserve. Thank you, Bronx Works. Thank you to my fellow honorees for being there with Bronx Works, with our Bronx community. Have a great evening, God bless. Congratulations to all our award recipients and thank you again for your support of the Bronx. I will now turn the program over to another strong woman leader, Adele Urson, long-standing member and secretary of the Bronx Works Board of Directors for closing remarks. Thank you, Ken. Hello, I'm Adele Urson, and I'm a member of the Bronx Works Board of Directors. I serve as secretary on the board and I'm chair of the program committee. I've been on the board since 2008, but I've been working with Bronx Works since 2000. It's been a while now, but the reason I'm still here like all of our staff, is that I'm wholeheartedly committed to our mission to feed, shelter, teach, and support to build a better community. It's what inspires and guides all of us. Over the years, I've been involved with a number of good organizations, all doing good work. But from the first time that I visited Bronx Works, I was so moved by their staff, how deeply caring dedicated, and how respectful they were of the people that we serve. I'd always said I'd never be on a board, but when our, my colleague, Emily Marks, um, asked me to consider it, I didn't hesitate. I'm really honored to be part of Bronx Works. Especially now, rarely has our work been more consequential than during these past two years. The COVID pandemic has cut deeply throughout the Bronx touching every aspect of daily life, from employment to housing, education, healthcare, of course, and the loss of so many lives. And then in the midst of all this, there's still tragedies like the recent Bronx fires that devastated households and communities. But Bronx Works is always there, deploying our resources, taking leadership positions, and creating invaluable partnerships within the community. 
and most importantly, being there to offer direct assistance whenever and wherever it's needed. So on behalf of the Board of Directors, I first would like to thank our Bronx Works staff. You are Bronx Works. Without you, none of this work could be done. I'd also like to thank our honorees, our partners who have been with us throughout, our donors and supporters, our very dedicated Board of Directors, and all of you who are here to celebrate with us tonight. Thank you. Over to you, Vlad. So that is our program. On behalf of everyone here at Bronx Works, thanks for taking the time to join us. Remember to contribute to Bronx Works program at any time by going to bronxworksevent.givesmart.com or texting Bronx Works Event to 76278, or you can visit bronxworks.org and click the donate button at the top of the page. Once again, I'm Vladimir Jutit. It's been a wonderful honor spending some time with you today. And whenever and wherever you've joined, wherever you are, please stay safe and be well, and we'll see you next year.